Howdy, everybody. Hi. How we doing? <coughs> we have got a full house today, which is wonderful. Not only students, we've got faculty, we've got the board, <laughs> president. Uh, so, yeah, I'm nervous. Uh, <laughs> give me a little leeway today. Uh, so, um, I am really happy to be here uh, for the first of our spring College City presentations. Uh, and, you know, as I, I was thinking about past presentations that I've heard this year, I noticed that there was just this really big emphasis on the word hope. Uh, this is something, for those of you that know me, I struggle with. Um, I'm a bit of a pessimistic person, and so, uh, but I found uh, inspiration through my fellow faculty uh, in ways that they, you know, look at a world that could be better and hope for a world that can be better and to find ways to do that. And so that's what I intend to do for you today as well, uh, referring to a specific portion of kind of my wheelhouse, which is uh, psychology, of course. Um, so I hope um, that we will be able to do something about stigma uh, surrounding mental health. Uh, so, I did not introduce myself yet. I am Becky Leverett. I'm the full-time psychology instructor here on the Spoon River College. Uh, and my uh, presentation for this afternoon is entitled, Breaking Bad, uh, Shattering the Stigma Surrounding Surrounding Mental Illness. I don't know how much shattering will do, uh, but hopefully we're going to reduce some of that stigma. All right, so uh, I want to first discuss a little bit about what stigma is, okay? Um, so stigma, I think we all intuitively understand, um, but according to uh, Siri this morning, uh, she was telling me that stigma is a mark of disgrace or a mark of shame. And boy, that resonated with me. Um, as I'm going to share with you in a little while some personal details about myself, um, I've experienced stigma related to uh, mental health. And so uh, stigma, I think we can all agree, is something negative and harmful. Okay, uh, so I think it's pretty important to look for ways to reduce that or to shatter it, if you will. So let's move on uh, by talking a little bit, kind of defining our terms a little bit, okay? Uh, those of you in, in abnormal psych just had to hear me say this, I apologize. Uh, so what is a mental illness, okay? Uh, a mental illness is just referring to conditions that affect thinking, feeling, and behavior. So your psychology basically is what we're referring to. And these are typically accompanied by difficulty functioning in your life, as well as feelings of personal distress, okay? Um, now, I am going to talk a little bit here about the history surrounding mental illness, uh, because we do uh, have a long history where we've looked at abnormal behavior and mental disorders and looked at them in a negative light. Uh, as if somebody were to blame because of spiritual problems or life problems. And uh, this has continued, right, all the way up until the present time. Uh, I think this is beginning to change. I have hope with your generation that we're going to continue to change the ideas that surround mental illness. But th it exists, right, these negative ideas about people that might be suffering uh, from mental illness. Now let's move on to talk about a little bit about why this is important, okay? Uh, what's the point? Why are you here today? Why are we talking about this? Um, the reason this is important is because mental illness in our society is common, okay? Extremely common. Uh, let me give you some stats. So uh, we're talking about annual prevalence. About one in five people suffered from some form of psychological disorder last year. So think about that, 20%, one in five, uh, are experiencing that uh, in the last year of their life. Um, if we look at lifetime prevalence, the numbers get much bigger, okay? Um, so here we're talking about people will suffer from a psychological disorder at any time within their life frame. Uh, and this is 46% of people. This ought to cause you uh, a little bit of a pause, right? Almost 50%, uh, one in two of us are going to experience some problem in terms of our mental health throughout our lifetimes. Now, these stats uh, may have problems with them, right? As we know, sometimes there are issues. 
uh, people, because of stigma, do not like to report that they have a mental illness. So it is estimated by many researchers that these numbers are vastly underrated, right? There's probably uh, many more people that are suffering that we don't know about because of the stigma of reporting it. Now, this is problematic because what the stigma does is it then prevents people um, from seeking treatment, right? From helping them to recover from those mental illnesses. So what we know is that over half of people who need treatment for a disorder uh, do not get it, right? They do not receive it. There's a number of reasons for that stigma uh, surrounding uh, kind of going to a doctor, admitting a psychiatrist, admitting that there's something wrong with you or something. Uh, also, people's distrust of kind of the, the medical institution, specifically psychologists and psychiatrists, right? All of these things can uh, kind of prohibit us from getting the help that we need uh, in terms of mental illness. So all surrounding, again, that idea of stigma. Uh, and I think we can agree that it's negative and we need to sort of get used to that or, or get rid of it, excuse me. Uh, this is a point in time. Uh, I wanted to tell you this at the onset, uh, but I'm going to tell it to you now. This is a presentation uh, out of all of my college theme presentations that is very near and dear to my own heart. Uh, because I am a person that has suffered uh, from a variety of mental disorders throughout my lifetime. I'm not going to cry. And uh, I have several diagnoses uh, that I want to share with you. Uh, I have diagnoses of major depressive disorder generalized anxiety disorder, um, I'm trying to remember, panic disorder, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, as well as borderline personality disorder, okay? All of these, again, share, carry a, a stigma that surrounds them uh, and make me feel oftentimes ashamed and broken, okay? Uh, and I'll continue to kind of give you some more of my experience as we uh, continue to talk about this today. So let's talk about some of the common, I guess I want to do these one at a time. Sorry, wrong one. And I need to get a drink. So, so what are some of the common stigmas associated with mental illness? And those of you out here in the younger generations know about these. You really do, right? You've confronted some of them and you're doing a good job at trying to eradicate them. Uh, one of those is that you're incompetent. Right? That you are not going to be able to go out and hold a job, you can't take care of a family, you can't sort of live a normal life as other people do, right? That you just simply are an incompetent person. Uh, another two I think that go very well together is that you are weak, right? If you just had enough strength to bring yourself up out of this disorder, to snap out of it, as I've heard people tell me before, you can then, you know, overcome this, right? Uh, that you are in some way broken. That because of, you know, things that have happened to you in your life, maybe in your early childhood, maybe because of your genetics, that you came out into the world a broken person and we can't fix you, right? That's another common sort of stigma associated here. Uh, that you are responsible for your condition. So I've had psychiatrists say to me, what thing did you do out there that caused you to be in my office depressed and anxious, right? Um, so even people within the mental health field carry around these stigmas. Uh, so responsible for it. And because I'm responsible for it and I can't fix it, I'm to blame and I should feel shamed, okay? Uh, the final one, which is a, a scary one, is that People with mental illness are dangerous. This, by the way, according to the research, is one of the stigmas that has grown hugely within the last 20 or so years because of the mega recording of mass shootings that happen uh, in the United States. And oftentimes we look at those shootings and there may be a person with a mental illness that carried out the shooting. And the problem with this is, is that these things are over-reported, right? We have a lot of these things out on the news. We believe that it's much more common than it is. And so we assume every person with a mental illness is dangerous. This is not the truth. Something like one to 2% of all people with mental illness actually are a danger to other people. Okay? The dangerous thing for us is that we might be a danger to ourselves. 
right? So the danger often comes in uh, at that point. Maybe we, you know, cut, maybe we uh, think about suicide or actually have tried to commit suicide, those types of things. So very common stigmas, I think we all can agree. And you guys could probably think of more, right? List a, a lot more than what there is. Now, in my research, I uncovered two types of stigma. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, Michael Maher, I could have included three industrial sort of, you know, bigger cultural types of stigma, uh, but I'm trying to keep it simple for the time frame. Uh, and so we have public stigma versus self-stigma. Both of these are harmful for people, okay? Um, I'm gonna argue in a second that self-stigma might be more harmful, uh, but public stigma is just, again, the idea that people with these mental illnesses are dangerous, they're incompetent, they're broken, they're responsible for their disorders, and what happens here is if other people believe that about that population of people, they are then led to discriminate against them. So they may not get a job, Right? They may not be given an apartment. If somebody learns of your label, right, you may be treated worse off than a person that is considered normal. Right? We'll put normal in quotation marks. Um, harmful, right? Um, Self-stigma is something that I have dealt a lot with in my life. Uh, is the belief where you internalize everything that the public believes about mental illness. So you say to yourself, I'm dangerous, I'm incompetent, I'm broken, and I did something to deserve this, right? And that leads to terrible feelings of shame and doubt and helplessness. Let me just uh, share with you some of the things that are associated with uh, shame. The research shows us, excuse me, sorry. Hopelessness, low self-esteem. Isolation from others. So we need connections. But that shame keeps you from going to people, right? Because you're afraid of how they're going to judge you. Um, it makes your symptoms worse, right? Isolating yourself, locking yourself up in your house makes you feeling depressed even worse than it was before, right? And so shame is a big part of that, right? That self-stigma. And that's what I've worked really hard on in the last 20 or so years to reduce and I'm doing that today by sharing this with you as well. Um, so let's talk about ways to, because that's the point of this, right? Ways that we can shatter stigma. We're going back to our, our college theme and our hammer, right? Shattering uh, these things that are, are negative in our world. These are just a couple of important uh, things that the National Institute of Mental Health uh, suggest. So we should all, as a society, talk openly about mental health and mental health issues. Um, we should educate ourselves and others. Um, so knowing about uh, you know, the stigma itself, uh, taking classes related to mental illness, educating yourself, trying to help others with that education, important. I think the middle one is, is really important. Show compassion. So don't tell that person that's depressed, snap out of it, what's wrong with you. Say, I'm sorry, how can I help you? Can I give you a hug, right? Those types of things. Um, normalize mental health treatment. So it's not weak to go out and to seek a, 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 the help of a professional. If you were to have cancer, where would you go? You would go to the doctor to receive treatment for your cancer. If there is a treatment out there that could help you with your disorders, why wouldn't we do the same thing, right? Why wouldn't we go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist to help us with um, that issue that we you know, might be facing. Uh, the last one here, um, well, there's another one coming up. The last one on this slide is to remember that change takes time. Uh, and this is what makes me so optimistic. And again, I'm not optimistic very often, but you guys, your generation, you're working. You're working online, you're working together to talk about mental illness, to talk about the things that you suffer from, to share your personal experiences, and to begin to reduce the stigmas that are out there. And we're seeing that that, that is happening, right? At least in terms of depression and anxiety, which are very prevalent uh, out there in the world. So keep doing that. Uh, and understand that it's not going to happen overnight, right? It's going to take some time, right? It's going to take some generations for us to reduce that stigma. It took us thousands of years to get here, right, in terms of negative ideas about this. It's going to take us some time to get out of it. 
Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit more personal. Uh, so the research revealed to me, and this was a actually a, a surprise, uh, is that the single most important way that you can engage in to reduce stigma associated with mental health is to share your own personal experiences, to share those with others. And boy, does that take courage, right? Um, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about me. I'm glad Andrew's here because he would make fun of my stupid high school picture. <laughs> um, this is 18-year-old Becky, who was fairly happy and ready to start her life. Uh, just a short two years later, this same Becky ran into some circumstances and intermixed with some childhood trauma, um, made a suicide attempt and was then hospitalized and um, sent to uh, a psych ward uh, to be evaluated um, with uh, many of these major diagnoses that we've already talked about. Um, and I uh, had, after that experience, one of the worst conversations with a psychiatrist in my life. Um, I, and again, mental health people carry these same stigmas, which is so scary. Um, I came out of the hospital um, and I went to see my psychiatrist for a follow-up. And he said to me, you are a relatively attractive woman and you seem fairly motivated. What's your problem? Why can't you just go out and do what you're supposed to do as a young adult? I walked out of that, I walked out of that office thinking, boy, Becky, there's something really wrong with you. And so you should never tell people about these things that are wrong with you, right? The shame, the guilt I have carried around for decades, for decades. And so that is something that shouldn't happen to people, right? And so we should share our personal experiences so that we can show other people, right, <clears throat> that are suffering, because there's lots of us out there, that this is common, right? That this is something that can happen to you and there is hope. Um, and, and I do want to say, right, that if I were to turn to this girl um, and, you know, tell her about what her life is going to look like in, you know, 25, 30 years, I would say to her that there is hope. Even though you carry around stigma and shame, you are going to go through periods that are difficult, but you're also going to go through periods where you persist and you are strong and you overcome and you will get better. You will get better. You may not completely be cured, but you will get better. And so there is hope, right? Even though the negative stigma uh, is out there and sticks with us for a very long time. I'm very sorry about that. I didn't know I was going to cry. <laughs> Apologize. Um, so this brings us back uh, to where we started. <laughs> yeah, so we need to laugh because I need to laugh. Um, so for those of you Breaking Bad fans as I am, um, that's kind of where I pulled my college theme, uh, at least the title, the header there from. Um, you know, we are uh, hoping to, to shatter that stigma surrounding mental illness. And I hope, I hope, right, that through these things and through uh, us sharing our stories that we can change the world in this way. And again, it might not happen overnight, but it will be something that if we continue to work on, uh, might get better, right? So, and Walter White approves of this. So, so <laughs> if you needed, you know, somebody to sign off on it, there you go. <laughs> Okay, um, I think uh, that now I have gotten to the portion of my presentation where I'm going to entertain some questions. I've also got some quotations that are great about stigma and uh, mental health as well. If you'd like to take a perusal of those. Do we have any questions? I have a question, but I just want you to know that you gave me a little bit of hope today. Thank you. Um, I went into this and I said actually to my therapist yesterday that if one thing happens out of this, um, it's just that I want one person, right, to hear the message and, and maybe, you know, feel some hope. So thank you. Uh, if I've done that, I've done my job for today. So thank you very much. Other questions? Comments? Yeah. I'm curious about your take on how some of the stuff is language for example, you, know, you said that when you say someone is responsible for their condition, that leads to guilt and shame and 
claim, uh, but uh, to take responsibility for your situation is an thing entirely. That's having the courage to talk about it, the courage to see Absolutely. It. So responsible, responsibility doesn't necessarily have to be associated with guilt and blame, uh, and that's the toxic link. And Absolutely. That, how do we change that language? You know, what are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. I I think that um, I think that saying to a person that they are responsible leads directly to that guilt and shame and stops that person then from becoming re responsible, from going out and doing the responsible thing, right? So I'm not sure about how we might change the language surrounding it, but I would just be careful in the way that we approach people, you know, and how we talk to them in that. But you're correct, in recovery, right, from, from these problems, you do have a responsibility, right, to, to seek out the help, right, and to, to, to do the work that's associated with it. So great question. I don't know if I have a great answer. But good question. As, as a trained, as an educator in psychology, do you think that uh, um, we are changing things so that the psychologists that you meet with are not going to have those types of stigma? Is there something being done with Boy, I hope discipline? So. I mean, <laughs> Boy, I hope so. I will say that I, I visited a number of mental health professionals in my life, and that was the one time that I was treated that way. So maybe that was a blip, right? right. Uh, the rest of them have been compassionate and don't tend to carry that stigma, but it gets back again to the whole institutional sort of belief, right? The cultural belief that there's something wrong with this. And it's sad that, you know, even mental health people might internalize that idea as well. Yes? How would you promote this in a classroom setting without addressing anything that could potentially be harmful to somebody who doesn't understand the situation? Um, so I think in a classroom setting, I would go back to those sort of ideas, right, uh, about how we talk about educating, how we talk about learning about mental health, right, uh, is gonna help to reduce and to shatter some of that stigma. Uh, in fact, in my abnormal psych class, we were gonna do that today, but I had to get out early, <laughs> but, we'll, but we'll talk about that uh, next week, yeah. So there's a, a number of ways in class to do that, and hopefully in a safe way, right? Uh, in a way that doesn't you know, point somebody out or, or, or trigger somebody, right, to, to have problems as well. Does that answer your question? Others? All right, well, uh, I want to tell you all thank you, and I wanted to leave, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't leave uh, talking about a topic like this without giving you some resources. Uh, so if these are not on the board long enough, email me and I'll get them for you. Uh, they're also hosted all over the place around Spoon. Uh, we do have Timely Care in place, which is our virtual health and well-being support. Uh, you have access through this 24-7 through your My Portal and SRC, totally free. Uh, we do have in our community Spoon River Counseling and Wellness. This is um, a phone number for them. You may have trouble here if you don't have a good insurance company, I will say that. Uh, and then finally, if you are thinking about suicide, you you know, something that is, you know, or, or a friend is thinking about suicide, this is the National Suicide Prevention Helpline. Uh, I will say that both of these are shared in the bathroom stalls, and this one is actually on our website. So all of that's there for you, but if you can't find it, email me and I'm happy to help. I think that's all I've got, guys. Thank you.